Okay, so let's talk about uh, bone and soft tissue injuries around the foot and ankle. Uh, We've already talked about a number of these things, but now we're going to go to uh, kind of bones and and things. So uh, one thing that we can like to talk about are nerve entrapments. There are a number of them around the foot and ankle. Uh, These can be due to acute trauma where you can have either compression or stretching of nerves, repetitive microtrauma, which is common in sports, inappropriate footwear, typically associated with high heels, especially around the uh, second and third and first metatarsal phalangeal joints, Uh, internal derangement, congenital or acquired masses, hypertrophic muscles, inflammation, and then plantar fascial injuries. So uh, we can start with uh, the perineal nerve. Uh, The most common uh, neuropathy in the lower extremity is the foot drop, uh, which typically involves a common perineal nerve, often around the uh, knee uh, adjacent to the uh, proximal end of the uh, uh, fibula. Uh, you also we can also get uh, abnormalities involving the deep perineal nerve, uh, which is called the anterior tarsal tunnel syndrome. Uh, superficially for the perineal nerve and then the sural nerve, as well as the saphenous nerve. Uh, so the perineal nerve tends to involve the extensor uh, muscles. That's when you get a foot drop. Uh, deep perineal nerve, well, well, we'll just go on through here. So if we kind of look at foot drop, uh, you start out here with uh, nerves coming out of the uh, uh, lumbar sacral plexus, coming down through the sciatic nerve, which then uh, goes into the uh, common perineal nerve and the tibial nerve. The common perineal nerve comes over here around the uh, proximal end of the fibula, where it is a very sensitive nerve uh, to trauma. And here, this is a kind of a blow up of the common perineal nerve coming around the head of the the fibula, uh, where it then divides into the deep perineal nerve and the superficial perineal nerve uh, in this location. So, uh, in, in evaluating foot drop, uh, you can get develop foot drop anywhere along the course of these nerves, uh, including the lumbar spine or around the, uh, uh, the knee are common locations where you can get injuries to the nerves which can produce foot drop. Uh, and then you can look for masses. So you basically do a physical examination and then have to decide uh, whether the imaging should be in the region of the spine, lumbar plexus, uh, lower part of the pelvis, uh, or around the, the knee. So uh, uh, here we can see some of the uh, different nerves which are involved. Uh, the tibial nerve uh, innervates the muscles in red. Uh, the deep perineal nerve uh, involves the extensors, which we see here, which are commonly involved in foot drop, and the superficial perineal nerve, uh, more of the, uh, the the lateral muscles here. So common perineal neuropathy is typically due to either compression or stretching uh, adjacent to the fibular head, common in sports injuries, motor vehicle accidents, fractures in this location, and uh, and surgery around the, the knee. And the symptoms are primarily involved foot drop. John, do you want to say anything about the perineal nerve here? Yeah, the, the most common uh, problem is the women crossing their legs and okay. uh, pressing on the uh, head of the fibula area. Um, as you know, the common perineal nerve winds around the neck of the fibular head. and okay. uh, uh, that's that's a very common uh, problem, in, mostly in women, but of interest, uh, the cases that I've seen have been in men. And uh, uh, people that cross their legs and dictate, uh, I saw a lawyer with bilateral problems, and then uh, the way that people sleep, uh, they sleep on one side and uh, they compress the nerve. Um, and wake up in the morning with a foot drop. Uh, it's uh, not uncommon, but 
Probably a foot drop is more common with back problems uh, okay. than, than anything else. Uh, injuries do occur here, but uh, the cases that I've seen, most of them have been uh, from um, people the way they, they sit uh, crossing their legs. And, uh, and usually that's in females. Okay. If you see that um, uh, women on talk shows, on TV, you'll see them crossing their legs, and that's pretty uh, common uh, to, to, to get that problem. Uh, Thank you. They try not to move too much when, they're, uh, when they take the uh, videos of them. Uh, okay. So whenever I see that, I say, well, here comes a foot drop one of these days. <laughs> okay. Uh, Robert, what do you think in this case? All right, so we have a 27-year-old male with knee pain post MVA and new foot drop. Uh, I guess looking at the perineal nerve, uh, I don't see anything grossly abnormal on there, but yeah. Okay. okay. So here we have, we're up as proximal as we get on this MR of the knee. Mm -hmm. And then here we can see the tibial nerve is, uh, I mean, the, the basically the end of the sciatic nerve is dividing into the perineal nerve and the tibial nerve here. So this mm -hmm. is a one cut, a little bit of difference in signal intensity on the two. If we go to a cut farther down, it looks like this. Yeah, now there's that uh, common perineal nerve looks thick and increased in signal. Yeah. And then if we go farther down, let me, let me go back here. So there here uh, and then we're, the, the nerve is going to be coming out in this area here and the uh, tibial nerve is going to be here and then here we get more distally we're getting down close to the fibular head now and this is the common perineal nerve uh, oh. subcutaneous right there and then now we're getting very close to the fibular head what are you seeing now it looks very thick and increased in signal and no. Right. And then if we go on the coronal images here, uh, and we, <clears throat> here we can see that there is a thickening, kind of bulbous thickening with edema and the distal aspect of the common perineal nerve there. And then you can follow it here. And then uh, what, what this was was a stretch injury of the common perineal, perineal nerve. Uh, uh, I think we have another lecture where we're going to talk more about the different kinds of nerve injuries. Uh, and at that time, we'll talk about uh, some criteria, which I think are kind of moderately uh, uh, accurate using MR to try to differentiate between those which are surgical and non-surgical. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tayson, what do you think of the, about this case? All right, 18 year old male, dorsiflexion weakness. So it looks like there is uh, edema within the uh, peronis longus muscle. Okay, here we go. Maybe a little bit here. Yeah. And the, and, and the other uh, uh, sensor muscles. If we come down farther down, we can see that the extensor muscles here are all very edematous. Yeah. And again, again, these are the muscles that are innervated by the common perineal nerve. And uh, this is a patient who had a foot drop due to common perineal nerve injury uh, around the, the uh, knee. Uh, when it comes to um, rugby, uh, to figure out what the injury is, is kind of hard because uh, it's, it's a tougher game than football. And yeah. uh, it could be a contusion of the nerve too. Um, so it's a, it, it, it's almost like a partial compartment syndrome here, the way it looks. Yeah, good. Anterior compartment syndromes are, of course, the most common ones. Right. Thank you. Okay, uh, Oleg. Forty-year-old 40 male, 
puncture wound in anterior calf, pain unable to dock dorsiflex. What do you think here are the pain films? Um, so uh, there is a an enlarged uh, like lateral compartment of the left uh, leg, like thickened. Uh, you, you mean the the subcutaneous tissues or? Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so it's uh, it's just more muscle on the left side, uh, but. Uh, but the, uh, the the arrow points to the uh, to the uh, side of the puncture, I guess. Okay, so uh, all right. Anterior okay. okay, here are the axial MR examinations. Oh, so uh, just uh, diffusely enlarged. Uh, that's all compartment edema. Um, Increased signal. Uh, I, I, this is post contrast. It's almost uh, like an no. abscess inside. Yeah. See, I don't think these are contrast. I think this is a basically a T1 and a PD fat sat. Yes. Okay. And then, mm -hmm. and then here we can see on the sagittal images. So uh, they're worried about like wearing, pulling out infection. Like fluid collections, or okay, all right. Now, what are these arrows pointing to? Oh, what is the arrows point? Uh, uh, it's uh, okay, that's pulsation artifact. Good, good. So, if we go back from the beginning again. Uh, so we had a puncture wound on the anterior part of the calf, unable to dorsiflex. They were concerned about infection. We go through. A, a, you could be very concerned about an abscess here. Last time it's like a pseudoaneurysm, something like that. Right? Yeah, but what we see here, and then here, this is a very funny appearance for an abscess, but certainly could be. But we have this kind mm -hmm. of a, a swirling pattern uh, within this. But then here we notice that there are just large amount of pulsation flow artifacts. So now you have mm -hmm. to be concerning about uh, aneurysm. This was a tibial artery pseudoaneurysm. I see. So this is all pseudoaneurysm here. Okay. Now that, yeah. If we uh, now kind of look at the dorsal anatomy, uh, you have uh, abnormalities in the dorsal part of the foot, really are associated with the anterior tarsal tunnel syndrome here. And uh, uh, it often has to do with uh, the flexor retinaculum, which goes across here. And if you can see, some of the nerves go deep to the extensor retinaculum, and some of them are superficial. Uh, so here, uh, um, so well, okay. And then uh, if we talk about going on to other areas where you can have nerve entrapment problems, uh, you can have the tibial nerve, uh, which if you get involvement of the tibial nerve, you have problems with the flexors rather than the extensors, uh, which I've found to be a, a very uncommon presentation for an MR examination. And then there's the posterior tibial nerve. Uh, and and the, this farther down, you can produce a tarsal tunnel syndrome. Uh, which is more uh, a much more common uh, problem to be evaluated by MR. The medial plantar nerve or jogger's foot, uh, digital nerves or Morton's neuromas, uh, which is a common uh, problem that we use MR to evaluate, and then Baxter's neuropathy that we will talk about. So, uh, Tayson, what do you think here? All right. Um, so I think on the stir images on the right leg, we see some increased signal in those uh, muscles there. Okay. 
So presumably they inject it on the right side. And kind of see that on the post contrast, kind of a kind of a diffuse edema pattern. Uh, but yeah. she was injected in the buttocks. So what do you think might be going on here? Um, perhaps they hit a nerve upstream, and this is some denervation changes. Okay, so we do see that edema there. So this would be the the, uh, the tibial nerve because it's posterior. See kind of subtle contrast enhancement within the. Uh, uh, the muscles, and yeah. this was uh, post injection denervation from involvement of the sciatic nerve uh, with the injection. Okay, and then if we kind of look at the the, the posterior tibial nerves that they come down here, uh, you can see that there's the medial plantar nerve on the medial side on the plantar aspect, uh, and then the uh, uh, the inferior cochineal nerve or Baxter's nerve that we'll talk about here, and then the uh, uh, yeah. So, so those are just the distal branches. Uh, so, if you get entrapment of the posterior tibial nerve uh, more proximally, you'll get a tibial Taylor tunnel syndrome. A little bit more distal, you'll get a Taylor cochineal tunnel syndrome. And the symptoms are really burning pain uh, with the more proximal one, the pain occurring more proximally in the tibial uh, Taylor tunnel that I'll show in a minute. Uh, and then you get paresthesias, tenderness, and the percussion sign where you get tenderness when you tap the, the skin. So if we look at kind of in the upper tarsal tunnel area, here are the different branches of the tibial nerve and its associated vessels. Uh, and here's the flexor hallucis longus, fetra digitorum. So it goes between uh, those two tendon more proximally. If you go more in the lower area, uh, we're, we're more distally where we're really posterior to the uh, medial tendons uh, and the medial aspect of the calcaneus medial to the, to the calcaneus, right? Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Robert, what do you think of this case? All right, so it says symptoms of tarsal tunnel. I'm looking so along burning the... and pain really uh, medially in the tarsal tunnel of the of the foot and ankle. Yeah, so looking at that medial aspect of the ankle, it looks like there's a cystic structure kind of medial, medially, yeah. Yeah, and this is probably the flexor hallucis longus tendon here, so it's just medial to the flexor hallucis longus tendon. And then here are some of the axial images showing that same cystic structure. Mm -hmm. And this was just a ganglion cyst, which was compressing the nerves. Okay. Uh, here's a, another patient with uh, symptoms of tarsal tunnel. And here we can see what look like cystic changes, but they're more linear. And, and this was the varicose veins on the medial aspect in the region of the tarsal tunnel, uh, which was affecting the nerves. Would that be a cyst, John? It could be a cyst, uh, the, like the previous one, except this was more longitudinal and uh, follows along the course of the vessels and extends uh, much more uh, in a longitudinal fashion along the neurovascular bundle here. Thank you. Yeah, and so these were big venous varices which were affecting the nerves. Okay. Uh, As in old days, I used to always aspirate these areas. And, ah, okay. Um, All right. So, Oleg, this was a patient who had medial pain, uh, but it was thought to be atypical. And this was what the MR scan showed. Um. So uh, uh, there is like uh, it's either uh, edema in the uh, like cow spot. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, edema where? Are uh, we talking about this? 
Uh, no, I'm talking like in front of the uh, Achilles tendon. Oh, here. Back yeah. In this area here? Or back here? Yeah, like all, all together. Oh, okay. All righty. Uh, I'm so looking the, at the... Uh, okay. This is this is what I'm concerned about. So we have loss of the normal oh, fat okay. within the so, sinus so tarsus. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that anterior process of the calcaneus looks abnormal here, with what looks like soft tissue between the navicular and the anterior process. Uh, here are the axial images and the coronal images. Not not the greatest images. This is an yeah, old low field system. Yeah. Um. It's uh, it's ah okay. So that's that. Uh, maybe it's uh, uh, like some kind of uh, uh, like lo- lobular structures, like uh, the hemosiderin, I guess maybe. Okay, so so you think that maybe it's P- PVNS? Maybe we yeah maybe pigmented villus yeah. Sen- senovitis. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That that I think that's that's a good thought. Uh, I, I think in this particular case, well, this is a different case, but some, uh, yeah. So uh, I, I think this patient had rheumatoid arthritis. And this was all uh, okay. uh, panis from rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, but here's another patient who had similar symptoms. Uh, Taysen, what do you think about this patient? Yeah, it looks like a. Uh... A lot of soft tissue fullness in that uh, tarsal tunnel region. Yeah, and again, you're between the flexor helicus longus and the flexor digitorum. So this is that area where the nerve and vessels go, and we can see that there's a kind of a soft tissue mass with a little bit of inhomogeneous edema on the T2. Again, low field scanners. Here we can see that there is also uh, something in the sinus tarsi, which is obliterating the fat within the sinus tarsi with erosions of the talus in this particular case. And this is another case of rheumatoid arthritis. Psoriatic arthritis also can look like this. Uh, You can also get gout in this location. And much less commonly, you can actually get uh, neoplastic masses. Way way back when, uh, last century, uh, a long time ago, uh, there was a big (laughs) battle in the north Mm-hmm. Uh, many years ago, okay. pe- pe- people, uh, orthopedic surgeons, used to have battles about is there such a thing as a tarsal tunnel syndrome? Because they would inject anesthetic and they would inject cortisone and it wouldn't cure them. So they all came to a conclusion that there's no such thing. Something else must cause it uh, rather than the nerve itself. Some Something was pressing it. Uh, uh, like rheumatoid arthritis, et cetera. Okay, interesting. Okay, uh, say, Taysen, what do you think of this one? All right. Um, coronal T1, I'm not seeing much. Uh, I think on the medial side of the ankle i see some soft tissue there yeah okay so we're seeing this and this and this all really in the area of the uh, uh distal tarsal tunnel area mm-hmm. yeah. oh, and this was scar tissue and this was an old shotgun injury uh okay. which produced scar tissue which then affected the nerves it gave them chronic uh, pain syndrome in the region of the sinus tarsi. Okay, uh, John? Uh, it, it must not, not have been a 12 gauge. <laughs> well, it wasn't buckshot. Probably, yeah, buckshot. probably a baby gun. Yeah, okay. Uh, See, Rob... the gauge would blow the foot off. Yeah. 
Sorry to interrupt, John. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have a history of tarsal tunnel syndrome. Looking at the, it's the medial aspect of the ankle there, there's like a lot of soft tissue thickening and soft tissue, I guess, signal there, there, some cystic yeah. foci. Yeah, this is very odd because of the, the margins of the cysts are kind of indistinct. Mm -hmm. And you have kind of more of a mass-like appearance to this particular one. And here are the axial T2, showing the inhomogeneous signal. Mm -hmm. Again, with relatively sharp margins, this looks a little bit different from the scar tissue we saw before. What do you think this might be? Well, I mean, I'd be concerned about a mass, uh, some sort of malignancy. Yeah, yeah th this turned out to be a, a soft tissue sarcoma. Okay. Okay, Jagger's foot, and this is compression of the medial plantar nerve between the navicular tuberosity and the abductor hallucis muscle. Uh, you get heel and arch pain, you get tenderness in the, over that area, as well as numbness. And this is really the area of the knot of Henry uh, where you get uh, uh, symptoms, and very often you'll actually get fluid and a bursa uh, where you get the uh, at the dot of Henry, where you have the crossover between the flexor hallucis longus and flexor digitorum tendons, and it's thought to in large part be due to uh, uh, motion of those two tendon against one another, uh, producing uh, kind of a traumatic inflammation involving those tendon sheaths in that area. But you can see that the, uh, if you have a mass or a a large cyst in this location. Due to that, you can compress the nerves and the vessel in the region of the knot of the Henry. And here, uh, the symptomatic side here is the left. The asymptomatic side is over here on the right. And here we can see fluid surrounding uh, the flexor hallucis longus and flexor digitorum longus tendons where they cross at the knot of Henry and the, and the knee. So that's, it's also called the flexor tendon intersection syndrome and, or a jogger's foot. Okay, uh, let's see, who's next? Is, is, is it Oleg next? Are you next, Oleg? Okay. Yes, uh, so we have a, uh, Uh, looks like uh, uh, again uh, uh, it's a T T two image. T, T. Well, this is a stir image. Stir. I'm sorry. Stir. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Stir. Stir. Yeah. yeah. Stir, 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 stir image. Yeah. This and, patient uh, has pain and tenderness uh, between the toes. And uh, uh, so we have uh, like edema uh, okay. uh, involving uh, uh, third and uh, fourth uh, metatarsal, uh, like okay. between metatarsal the phalangeal joints. Okay, here's uh, what it looks like in the coronal plane. Uh, and it's and it's a it's it's a it's a common location for the um, so it's, it's it's there's a mass. Okay. Uh, again, it's a, it's a, a bright on on stir and uh, uh, hypo on TT one. Yeah. And uh, it's a common location for the Morton's neuroma, I guess. Right. Good. And here's just another patient who has multiple ones of these here, mm -hmm. which we can see there. And it's uh, this is one foot. The other one was the other foot. So these are bilateral Morton's neuromas. Now, most Morton's neuromas, maybe not all, but most of them, I think, are due to trauma of the uh, nerve in, in between uh, the uh, metatarsal heads, where the, the nerve becomes traumatized. And uh, <clears throat> what happens is then proximally you get thickening of the nerve, just like if you have a transected nerve like we saw before, uh, they become very sensitive. And, and these are not true neoplasms. These are actually injury to the nerve, and you can get some inflammation and some uh, scarring of the nerve due to 
uh, the partial transection of the nerve, and you get a bulbous end that's, that's very sensitive. And it's typically seen in women who wear high-heeled shoes who get the repetitive trauma to the uh, to the nerve between the uh, metatarsal heads uh, from wearing high-heeled shoes. doesn't have to be, uh, but that's a typical appearance of Morton neuromas. Back, I'm not lecturing. I'm sorry, what? John, did you say something? Uh, somebody called me. At, uh, oh, one my okay. gotcha. Oh, okay, gotcha, sorry. Okay, and then uh, if we back up a little bit, we can look at the inferior calcaneal nerve, also called Baxter's nerve. And this is uh, uh, part of that um, medial nerve. When it breaks off here, we, we get the Baxter's nerve coming across just anterior to the calcaneus. And, and this can be uh, uh, typically uh, injured in runners. You can have heel spurs here, which may uh, lead to, uh, uh, to increased risk of uh, injury to Baxter's nerve. Uh, and you get tenderness, and then you can get uh, denervation of the adductor digiting minimi muscle because Baxter's nerve comes across medially laterally, and it innervates the abductor digiti minimi uh, muscle. <clears throat> now, as you all know, about 6 to 7% of adults will have significant fatty atrophy of the abductor digiti minimi, whether or not they have a, a, a plantar osteophyte or a, a plantar fasciitis that, that we'll talk about. Uh, so it's, it's unclear whether just a lot of people will get injury to Baxter's nerve that are asymptomatic, or whether there are other reasons why you can get fatty atrophy of the adductor digiti minimi. Uh, <clears throat> but, but that's what you look for. Uh, and this is commonly involved in heel pain syndrome. And this is a bigger topic. Why don't we stop here and we'll talk about the heel pain syndromes and Baxter's neuropathy uh, on Thursday, okay? Okay. All Thanks, right, everyone. Thank Have a good couple of days. All righty. Thanks, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year again.